Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while since I posted on this channel, but I really want to uh, thank you guys for sticking with me through about the last year of not really posting. Uh, I do want to let you guys know that I have a bunch of exciting content coming up and a different flair to the channel that you guys haven't seen before. It's going to be less course vlogs and more kind of day in the lives, bringing you through the life of a college golfer for any of the um, young golfers out there that think about going to college to play golf. I want to show them what it's like and kind of how I go about it. But today we're going back to the basics. We are going to be doing a course log at a course I've already played before. Now a lot of you guys think, well, you've already played it before. Why are you going back there? So this course was just recently renovated and just opened up a couple, uh, about a month or two ago. And the course contacted me to make another video for them. So I was happy to do it. It's one of my favorite courses I've played on the channel. So we are back at uh, Bayonet Golf Club at Puppy Creek just outside of Fayetteville, North Carolina. So, hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, if you've seen the original video, stay tuned to watch this one. There's definitely some differences in the course between two years ago and now, so hope you guys enjoy, and let's get right into this video. All right, first hole here, banging at 525 yard par five, dog leg right around this corner. Hitting driver, right at that right bunker, trying to cut it around that corner. So let's see what we can do. Uh, so unfortunately, pushed this one a little right of the fairway. Uh, got around that first bunker, but did end up directly behind this tree. Uh, see the pin right there? Not really gonna have too much. Probably just gonna be chipping one out towards that tree. And for myself, I'm playing, try to make birdie the hard way. Okay, so not the start we wanted. Nice firm handshake back into YouTube golf. It is what it is though, we got a lot of holes left. Um, going straight on to hole number two, 425. Y'all remember from my previous video, pins right over this bunker right here. Right side's very quick drop off. So I'm really, I'm gonna be trying to take a driver over this left bunker. It looks like the left miss is okay. So if we take it over that left bunker, we should be okay. Uh, we took the aggressive line here. Got a little unfortunate ball, landed really soft in this rough and just didn't quite roll out down that hill, but not bad. We got 160 to that back right pin. Into the wind, but downhill, probably be playing it pretty much the number. So we're gonna be taking a flight eight iron at the center of the green. Try to let it cut back to that pin. Let's see how close we can get it.
I haven't been quite the best judging the wind. I really can't feel it down these trees. So you really gotta make sure that when you're playing this course and you get a spot where you're not in the wind, you gotta make sure you feel it. Cause I thought I hit that eight iron pretty good. And obviously it came up about 20 yards short, but should be downwind now. So we're going to the third hole. Pins back and play about 180. 165 to the middle. So we're just gonna try to put this you know, it's just left of the pin and see how close we can get and hopefully get that first hole back. Uh, I just want to take a second and acknowledge the fact that course knowledge is a huge part of this game. First of all, we can talk about the wind. That was something on the tee. You can, I can definitely feel it more up here at the green. But I did not realize that these are different green contours than the last time I played here since they redid it. Top tier here, middle tier, lower tier, and then even lower tier up front. I didn't realize that there were different tiers of this green. I really thought the green started about right here and this was more of a middle flag. So luckily I got this ball all the way up there and didn't spin it off this slope right here. So just to let you guys know, if you guys come play here, really pay attention to where that pin is. If it's back, I mean, you got a little bit of room past this pin, but I'd much rather have an uphill putt. And if the pin's middle, make sure you miss short and set along. Uh, it was really nice to come off of a birdie there. Um, part threes have not been my strong suit in the past. I've really been working hard on them the last year. So looks like it's starting to pay off. Uh, now we got a pretty, I think pretty difficult par four. Uh, fourth hole, 425. Green's pretty much right out there. We do have water shore of this green. It's a little into the wind today, so I'm just gonna hit a low driver, let it chase down the hill, hopefully stopping just short of this water. And let's see what we can do from there. Uh, to be honest, I got pretty lucky here. I uh, really thought I had more room up this left-hand side. Really thought when I was driving up, I ended up down there. When I got up to that part of the car path, I was like, oh crap, I really think I hit it down there. Ball got a good bounce, stayed up. Can't really complain, it's right where I aimed. We got 147 now to this pin, dead into the wind. And really, I mean, it's a back pin. I'm gonna be hitting that same eight iron I did on number two. Flight it back there and just try to get it back there. I've kind of been short with most of the shots into the wind today. So let's see if I can get this one back there and give myself another opportunity to birdie. I 
Uh, so once again, I really want to show how slope this green is. And it's kind of hard to tell from here, um, but you got this big slope right here that pushes balls to the back. That's little subsection over there. And you got this big front section up here. So when I hit my shot, I really thought it was going to be short. So I said, go thinking it was going to end up down here. Uh, ball carried up top, kind of kicked his way forward and got me pretty much where you guys saw it. So once again, knowing where the pin location is and kind of knowing where the slopes are on these greens is really helpful if you guys come out and playing here. It's going to give you the best opportunity to make par or birdie. Uh, as I said on the last hole, pretty good par. Um, kind of knowing these contours of the greens definitely help. And yeah, and that's pretty much about it for that hole. We're going to move straight on to the fifth hole here. 530 yard par five. Pins back just to the right of that bunker. That bunker is pretty much the only thing in play off the tee. It looks like there is a creek up this right hand side. I remember saying this last time I played here. And I actually got some crap for it. I said this feels like Pinehurst. And I mean, it's definitely a different feel than the first couple holes. I feel like the one through four, you feel like you're almost in a neighborhood. You have the house around you. Out here, you're kind of separated from a lot of stuff. It's a lot more open. So that's kind of what I meant when I, I'm pretty sure that's what I meant when I said it was more like Pinehurst. But anyway, we're going to get back to the golf. That's good. You guys came here to see. So we are going to go play this hole. And I'll take you guys along for the ride. A uh, little bit unfortunate there with that tee shot. Didn't quite hit it the best. Tried to play the cut and just cut a little off the toe so it kind of turned over left. Um, and then just landed into the slope and didn't get any run, so it rolled back in the bunker. Tough lie. I mean, got it out to a playable spot. Only problem is ball is sitting way down. It's into the wind. And this is the dilemma I'm having. It's 169 to the pin. 157 covers that bunker short. If I take seven out of the slide and it jumps, it's the perfect club because it cut through the wind. If it doesn't jump, then I'm short in that bunker. So if I take six and it jumps, I've been long in the play. And if it doesn't jump, it's the perfect number. I think I gotta go with the safer play. Six definitely gets me over. And this is kind of, well, I was talking about earlier in the intro, like this is kind of what, if you wanna play college golf, this is kind of what you gotta think. You gotta eliminate the big number. I know long, I can get up and down, make bow get worse. If I'm short on that bunker, that brings double into play. So we're gonna take a six, hit a soft six, kind of hit a high flurry one, try to put this one as close as we can. And call for the wind. All right, so 
really makes me feel like I know what I'm doing when I go bogey bogey on the two par fives on the front. Gotta be honest, I it really just started with a bad tee shot, missing in the wrong spot. And then from there, it just kind of snowballs. If you're in the bad spot off a tee, then it forces you to play defensive the rest of the way. And you guys kind of saw that green where that pin was. I mean, there's some treacherous slopes on these greens, and you guys have seen them on the other couple holes. So a little bit tough if you put yourself out of position to, you know, be able to save par. But that's in the past. We got log off left. Went on to the sixth hole here. Par four, 465. Pretty much straight away. I really think this is a hole where you just rip driver and just see where that leaves us. I think it's pretty obvious where I need to improve my game right now. Um, hit this one way right. Hit it pretty well, and luckily we have a lot of room over here on this right-hand side, but driver's not been that great today. I did hit a second one, and dead center, pretty much dead center of the fairway, but this one is in play, and we're going to play it like we win a tournament. We got 155 of this pin. Probably going to hit like a 160 shot. Um, trees should not be an issue. Lie is actually pretty good, so... We take us like pretty much right over this bush here. Wind should push a little right, which puts us right along with the flag. So see if we can recover from a poor tee shot. Uh, pretty good par recovery there after, I would say, a very fortunate tee shot. Um, thankfully, having enough room over there to miss as bad as I did is helpful. So, we're going to move on to hole 7. Try to straighten up my driver a little bit. Par 4, 415, dog leg right. Remember correctly, pins over these trees. There is a creek that runs up this right-hand side, though, that cuts through the fairway. Going to be taking this pretty much right over this set of bushes. Just a low chaser. Fairway ends at about 320, so... Pull this one in play and try to, once again, just try to play the hole the best we can. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I hit that one pretty good. I didn't think I'd be almost through, the, or pretty much actually through the fairway, let alone almost into the trees. It is a little downwind, and I mean, I started this ball at the 150, had a little cut, probably chased down this hill. So if you're playing, going off the back tees, a 270 shot's probably all you need. 270 puts you pretty much probably right up around that 150 mark, and that's just a great place to aim. But right here, we got very aggressive, unknowingly. Got 106 yards to this front pin. Wind's off the right. I'm hitting like a 115 shot, trying to spin it off the back right and put, try to put this close and give myself another, hopefully close, but another birdie opportunity.
All right, and once again, not a bad par. Um, put a little bit too much spin on that one. Picked it really cleanly out of that rough, so I, I didn't think it was gonna spin that much, but definitely spun a lot. Now, to what I feel like is the toughest hole on the course, it's not rated this way, but from the tips, it seems like a pretty tough hole. 475, dog leg left, par four. Bunker out there, probably about two, it's 297 to the back of it, so probably about 285, 290 to the front of it. And there's two options to play this hole. You could be very aggressive and hit a driver along this line or aim at that bunker with a draw. I feel like I'm not the best at hitting a draw. My go-to shot is a cut. So we're gonna hit with at least a driver. So we're gonna hit three wood at that bunker, try to turn one over to the left, which is a little bit easier for me with this and try to get some chase and give myself a reasonable shot in for a second. Uh, was able to turn that one over perfectly. Started to live it up this right-hand side. Was able to use the fairway contours with the wind. To put myself pretty much on this left side of the fairway. Downhill, we got 180. As far as thinking about the screen, if you're having a longer shot in, it's very sloped back to front. So it allows you, if you're hitting a longer shot, like say maybe a five iron from over there, you're gonna be able to hold the screen a little bit better. Luckily for us, it's downwind at 180. You're gonna be hitting an eight iron. Try to put this one close and really try to give us a birdie opportunity on a very difficult hole. Not a bad par. Uh, gave it a little bit too much juice on that first putt. Was able to make that comebacker though. And yeah, I'll be honest, on um, Bermuda, left to right short putts are not my favorite. So glad I was able to make that one. Anyway, we're gonna go into hole nine. Tough par three, 181 up the hill to a back pin. I think if I remember correctly, this again has a couple different tiers. So we're gonna be hitting six iron. Try to get back there as far as we can. And give ourselves another opportunity at birdie.
Uh, real nice way to end the front nine there. Very odd for me to birdie both par threes and bogey both par fives. Usually it's the other way around. Uh, but even par is even par. I'm never going to complain about how I shoot even par. Especially on a front nine like this where it's definitely not the easiest. Heading on to the back nine now. Hole 10. Can't really see much on the tee. It's 355. Uh, you can see that bunker, which is left edge of the fairway. I know in my last video here, I hit two iron. I pulled it. It's way over there. Somehow managed to make par. Don't have the two iron in the bag right now. I switched it out for a hybrid. Um, but even then, I'm going to hit driver. I can see it looks like part of the flag right there. Griffin driver right at that. Try to get ourselves as close to the screen as possible. And honestly, just see if we can potentially drive the green. I know it is downhill, but let's see what we can do. All right, so very interesting hole and what happened during that hole. Uh, between the drive and the second shot, there's probably a good seven to eight minutes of, you know, I spent pretty much the entire time looking for that ball. Got very lucky I found it right at the last second. Um, went to go get my clubs, realized I didn't have my 60 degree wedge. Had to drive all the way back to eight, get it. Luckily there's no one behind me right now. Got it, drove all the way back. I'm a little out of breath, but it is what it is. We're gonna move on to hole 11. 405 yards, dog leg left. Very risk reward. If I turn over a driver, I'd really have to hit a big slinging draw around this corner. And it's 290 through the fairway, so play it safe. Hit three wood, kind of splitting the 150 stake in that left tree, pull it in play, and see if we can make par that way. Uh, a little unfortunate there. Turned it over a little bit. I actually was not expecting it to draw that easily. Got around this tree, just left of the fairway, not by much. But I mean, we got 112, no tree trouble really. I mean, I feel like we got a lot of room there. Got a little bit of green off to the right of that pin. So we're taking, right now I'm thinking either a 50 or a pitching wedge. It is a little into the wind. Might just go knock down pitching wedge because that guarantees me that I'm there. And with this wind, yes, we're gonna go knock down pitching wedge, just ride this pin, try to put it on and get ourselves an opportunity at birdie.
All right, so after not a great tee shot, really good par there. Uh, did get a little lucky. I said I was gonna go right at that pin. Pulled it a touch, ended up left of it, but gave myself a relatively easy putt, about 19 feet. Um, and I know a lot of people are probably wondering, and I've gotten asked this a lot in person, what am I doing when I do this or anything like that when I'm reading a putt? So essentially, short term, I'm actually gonna do a full video on this soon. So let me know if you guys wanna see that and I'll try to get out a little bit quicker. Uh, I use aim point now to read my putts. So essentially I feel my feet and that percent degree of slope correlates to how many fingers I hold up. I'll go more into depth with it in the video I do on it, but just to give you guys a little overview of what I'm doing so you guys don't think I'm just holding up fingers for fun. Anyway, we're gonna be going to hole 12. Very similar to the last hole, just a touch longer at 410. Dog leg left, and we're gonna try to hit that same three wood. But this time starting it just a touch more right and letting it turn over as compared to trying to start it left and then having it turn over on us. So hit three wood just right at that 150, trying to turn it over to the 150, and let's give ourselves a good opportunity at birdie. Ah, good tee shot here, got this one in play. A little toe, so might have gone a little bit further if I hit it well, but through the fair was no good. Learned that lesson last time I played here. Uh, but yeah, tough shot here. I got 170 to this back pin. In the wind, probably hitting like a 185 shot. It's a little uphill, and it's about a club and a half into the wind. So probably gonna hit a six iron back there, try to put it close, and like I said, just keep giving myself opportunities for birdie. And eventually we'll start making some on par fours and par fives. And just to show you guys from the back of the green, back pin, you have this slope that slopes everything to the back. Get a really nice quality shot there. But front of the green falls forward and it's actually pretty flat. So if you have a back pin, you can play for it to least. You can play about four or five yards short and it will release down this hill and hopefully give you a shot, hopefully closer than mine, to be honest. Uh, really nice birdie there, especially on a non-par three for once. Um, yeah, no, that is, that's a really cool green. Like I keep saying, like it helps to know the slopes on these greens. I don't really know these slopes, but I'm kind of on the good side of it right now. So hopefully you guys, by watching this video, will be able to see a lot of the slopes on these greens. That way you can actually utilize them like they're supposed to be used. And we're going to move on to hole 13 now. A little slight dog leg left, but about 410 again. And last time I played this course, I was able to hit more of a draw off the tee. I hit a low, essentially hook, and just like right around that tree. Not looking to do that today. We're just hitting a low driver, a little chaser, splitting that tree right there and the 150 sign. So see if we can put this in play and hopefully give ourselves another opportunity at birdie. Well, I wanted to cut and stay dead straight. Should work out really well. Also, for any of you guys that are wondering, these pine cones are the actual tee box for the what they call the professional tees. I just call them the tips. But yeah, those are the actual tee markers. All the others are normal, but the back tees are these nice little pine cones, which a little bit surprised on the first hole, but on every hole, so I can kind of assume from that. These are the tee markers. 
Uh, I do want to address something real quick before I talk about that shot. The way I'm playing the course today, it could play completely different tomorrow. This is just the way I would play it in the conditions I'm given today. Probably most of the time on this hole, I'm probably hitting three wood. And on a normal day, it's probably ending up here. There is a bit of wind into the face. That's why I feel like three wood ended up back there if I hit it. So that's why I hit driver. On a normal day, I feel like a good driver, for at least me, would end up running into this stuff or end up over there. I got very fortunate. This ball actually did not cut like I wanted it to. Which actually, if it cuts, it's probably on that slope. But we found this little, uh, little narrow fairway leading up to the green. And I got 122. So we're going to be hitting about a one, 128 shot, a little into the wind. Try to get it back there and give ourselves another opportunity at birdie. I'm really not sure if that's good. It looks good. Another really good shot here. Got a nice uphill putt. Did actually not, I didn't think that shot was actually gonna be too good. Well, I, I thought it could be okay, but couldn't see over this hill and there's a little slope there. So once again, just ending up in the right spots today is very fortunate. Um, but if you had this back, if you have this back pin, now you can go a little bit left because if you're up there, you're gonna be coming over these ridges and it's gonna be a little more difficult of a putt as compared to the one I'm gonna have right now, which also gonna be pretty straight, probably just breaking off a slight bit to the left. Uh, that's what we like to see right there. Back-to-back -back birdies is always nice. Like I said, as soon as, as you keep giving yourself opportunities, they're eventually going to drop. I know I'm a good putter, so I know if I give myself opportunities, eventually they're going to start falling. So I'm not going to say let's try to make it three, but that's kind of the goal. Uh, if we don't, no worries. But we do have another part three. 15 is playing at 200 yards today. I don't remember being this much downhill. So it's probably playing about 190. In the wind's going to bring it pretty much right back to 200, so be hitting this low five iron, try to keep it below the trees, put it somewhere on the green and see if we can give ourselves another opportunity at birdie. Uh, I'm not going to lie and say I'm a little disappointed to walk away with a par. But at the same time, that was a very tricky putt. That was very quick. Had a couple different breaks to it, and I kind of just pushed it. Uh, but it is what it is, walking off with a par. And it's three straight threes, which is always nice. Not going to say we're trying to go for four straight threes, but who knows. It's going to be a little bit tougher here. 475 par 5. Hazard down the left. The world just mainly trees but the world to the right try to keep something up this right hand side and have it bank off these little moguls back to the fairway and give ourselves an opportunity to get to the green too
And just like we said, don't go left. We did not go left, we went right. We are actually on the next hole <laughs> by the green. Um, I did go look at the left side. It's not as bad as it looks. It's not gonna be easy to play from down there, but I think it would give me a little bit easier shot than this. Pins back there. Two options, punch one through this gap, which takes that hill and we'll put it over there, which isn't the best option. Or I'm gonna try to hit a high hook over these trees, get it back out and play and see if we can put one into a spot where we can hopefully get up and down for birdie. Oh, that hurts. That really hurts. <sighs> All right, that's one of those that hurts the soul. Um, now, to be fair, did I deserve birdie there? No. Well, did I really want birdie there? Yes, and I, I thought I made that. You can tell by my reaction on that putt. Just, I thought it was in, it looked really good. And then, yeah, it just slips out. It's a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. We're going to hole 16 now. We got three holes left. 191 into the wind. I think a punch five iron, just like we did on 14. Or on, uh, yeah, 14. That's the middle green. Try to get this close and see if we can hopefully make another birdie. Uh, a little bit unfortunate there. Pulled my tee shot just a bit, and I know I've been talking about all day how I've been on the good side of a lot of the hills and breaks. Um, and it's, it's starting to even out, as you can see there. Just ended up in a bad spot. Really difficult to get it close. So, it is what it is. Bogey's not a killer. We're still playing well. So, we're going to move on to 17. 460 par 4 dog leg left. Taking driver right over this bunker with a little cut. Actually, you're probably going to go right edge of the bunker it's been a little draw because i've been hitting a little draw but still we're gonna try to hit that little little cut shot back to the fairway of course i'm in a good position hopefully we can finish strong
Uh, pretty good tee shot here. Put herself on the right hand side of the fairway just like we wanted. Do want to note a couple things though. Um, on the last hole, that spot I was in, there actually used to be a bunker there. So when they redid the greens and regrassed them, they did take out a couple of the bunkers on the course. I haven't been seeing too much of that, uh, but I did notice it on the last hole. And then also right here, I remember there used to be a bunker. Uh, so that kind of shows, you know, what change they made along with regrass and the greens from bent grass to, I want to say Tiff Eel Bermuda. I will put something in, something in here right now if I have the, have it wrong what type of grass it is. But anyway, enough on that. We at 170 to this pin. Then lap looks pretty steep. We're starting a little bit right of the pin. Wind is pushing a little right, so that will help. About 170, you're going to be a knockdown seven iron. Try to fly it in there and put ourselves in a position to hopefully get one back from the last hole. I mean, my, my target, my pin is the tree behind it. Turns over. Really good. Yes, sir. Yes. That is a great feeling right there to make a comeback birdie on the second hardest hole on the course. And that is not an easy hole, especially with that pin location. One problem now is we're on 18. We got a little bit of wind, and I have two options, and this is kind of kind of what I'm thinking about. 530 yard par five. Green's back, we can see the club outside, green's back there. Smart play, driver, right up there. Give myself an opportunity to get on two, but it will be a second shot into the wind. Or, this is the gap I took last time. I played here. And it could work out really well. The only problem is if I don't get it high enough, which I do hit the ball a little bit lower now. I'm screwed. I like the play because the wind's off the right, so we're gonna give it a shot. So let's see what we can do. Hopefully put this ball in a playable spot and try to finish with another birdie. Uh, so you guys might have noticed that I didn't actually go through that right gap and I, I thought about it. I kind of talked to myself, thought to myself after, you know, saying I was going to do that. And like, what's, what are the pros, what are the cons? The only pro is if I hit it well and it draws, I'm up there. Otherwise, I'm in these trees, down in that crap down there. You know, I might try to get it up too quickly and chunk it, top it. And it just made more sense to go out here. And I did spin this one a little bit. Ball actually pitched right there and behind the ball. So I do have a little bit longer for Sean. It's 250 in. I'm gonna be hitting a three. We're really going for it. Try to get this as close to the as we possibly can and try to give ourselves an opportunity to finish with the birdie, maybe even an eagle.
Uh, that will do it for today's video. I want to give a big shout out to the guys at Bayonet Golf Club for getting me out here today. Of course, it's in great condition. Um, Price-wise, it's actually really good as well for this time of year. And the condition is amazing for this time of year. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely come check out this course. I'll leave a link to their website in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you in the next video.